So today we're going to talk about a technique that's been dominating and it's only going to keep evolving in the years to come. In this video, you're going to learn everything you need to know about hover strolling and mid strolling. First, let me define what these two terms mean. I'm taking the definition from the Japanese where this technique originated. Hover strolling is when the bait is lightly weighted and the bait sort of hovers in the upper part of the water column. When I say light, you can use nail weights as small as 196 of an ounce and jig heads actually of the same size. A lot of these baits also have some buoyancy, so the lighter the weight you use, the more it will actually hover. Mid strolling, you will use more standard size weights like 1 8 uh, 3 16 You'll retrieve it in the same method, but it will be more in the middle of the water column, hence the term mid strolling. With either of these techniques, the bait is retrieved while shaking the rod tip. It's important while shaking the rod tip to put slack in the line. This will cause the bait to roll and flash. Rigging is super important and this took me a little while to figure out. If you don't have the right combination of hook and weight in the right place, you won't get a smooth consistent rolling action. The same goes for a jig head. A lot of times I'll run the hook right under the skin on the back of the bait and this will help with the rolling action. But you have to experiment. Every bait, every jig head is made differently. Experiment each day with natural baits, flashing baits, bright colored baits. Usually the water clarity and the weather conditions will dictate what color bait you're gonna use and what the fish are reacting to. Bait color is a huge part to the success of this presentation because the fish are getting a real good look at it so experiment each day there's a lot of upside to this technique guys so go out and experiment with it it's up to you the angler to be creative what worked for me is one day i just went out and that's all i brought and i messed around with it all day and that really upped my game i could say that for almost any technique but when it comes to this technique i would definitely just put every rod away go out one day just take a bunch of these baits, some jig heads, some nail weights, some hooks, and go out and mess around. So now, let's take a look at some baits. All right, let's start with the Depths Sakamata Shad in four inch or five inch. This is the five inch. This is also the heavyweight version, and I use a little bit of both, but I'd rather not have the heavyweight version. It's just what I grabbed today. All right, that's bait number one. This is another one of my favorites, the Jackal Drift Fry. This is the 5.2. This is the 4.0, and this is the 3.0. I've had this one for a few years. Probably this is the third season. This one I started with last year. This one is brand new. I haven't even caught a fish on it. I haven't even put it in the water, but um, it's won a couple events already. It just won at Toledo Bend. It won last year at Lake Champlain. It obviously works. It's a bigger presence, like a glide bait. It's gonna draw more. I like it, nice and soft. These are great baits. They're just hard to get. Next bait is the fish arrow. This is the split tail. This is the straight tail. This bait, along with the drift fry, I've had for about three years. I like this bait a lot too. Uh, it flashes awesome. It's not really hard to get it to, to roll. This is a great bait and this is sort of available. I would get on this before people figure it out and then you ain't gonna be able to get this either. All right, the OSP Mylar Minnow. This is the 3.5, this is the 2.5. The 2.5 is tiny, I ain't gonna BS. It's not that you can't use it for the hover rig, but again, you better really downsize everything. It's good on a drop shot too, but the 3.5 is more my style. It's got a decent roll, it's got a good flash. It's not as pronounced as some of the other ones, but it's, it's it, it will work, it's a good bait. The Hog Farmer Spunk Shed. This is a 3.5 and I think the other one's a 4.5. Believe it or not, of course, these are readily available and these, these roll and flash pretty good. I actually haven't used them for this. There's other guys using it out there. I've tried it and seen what it looks like, but this is something, if you guys were just getting into it, I would grab yourself a couple packages of these um, because they're readily available and they will do what you want them to do. Crush Shitty Freeloader. This is new to me. Uh, I haven't really messed with it yet. I've put it in the water. It looks okay, but it's accessible to you guys. To me, believe it or not, I think this is great as a chatterbait trailer, but Jacob Wheeler won with this thing, hover strolling. 
So it obviously catches fish. Put it on a jig head, mess with the hook, mess with the size, and I'm sure you'll catch fish too. Six cents, juggle minnow. This actually looks okay. And if you follow Ben Milliken, he smashes them in front of our face with this stupid thing. So obviously it works. Um, I've caught a few fish on it. I just don't go to it right off the bat, but I have messed with it, obviously, because I bought it, I messed with it. I have a buddy who catches them pretty good on it. Um, as you can see, I got a lot of freaking baits. So I buy everything to mess with them and see, you know, if, if it's gonna take the place of something else, especially since some of these other baits are super hard to get. So you gotta have something in its place. Uh, this is another one that, can, that you can put in its place, okay? All right, the Raid Fish Roller. Uh, this is the four, uh, they have a three. Uh, I chose to buy the four because I'd rather throw a four inch if I can and get away with it. Uh, I have not thrown this yet either. I have put it in the water. It looks pretty good. I can't see it not working. Um, but once again, you need some options because that Sakamata Shad, that Drift Fry, and the Fish Owl, they're a pain in the ass to get. So you got to have some other options. All right, Dual Realis Finder Shad. This is three inches. I know some people who swear by this thing. I quickly dropped it in the water to see what it looks like. Eh, it looks okay. To me, it doesn't set the world on fire, but I know some guys are swearing by it, so I'll give it a shot. It's easily accessible for you guys. Believe it or not, it's three inches, and the way I rigged it up was probably overpowered, so I probably have to mess with that if I really want it to work, and I'm gonna keep telling you guys the same thing, basically. You gotta mess. Each bait's gonna have a little bit of a different weight to hook to line ratio. You're just gonna have to mess with them. All right, when it comes to rigging on a jig head, this is by far my favorite head, the Owner Range Roller. It's not easy to get. I don't know what else to say, but I'm giving you what, what is my favorite head, and then we're gonna go down from there. This Horizon Head by Gamagatsu is another favorite of a lot of guys. I've used it, I've been using it. It's good, it works. Okay, this, the Decoy Plus Magic, this is another one I've been using. Uh, for a couple years it's a good one so guys when it comes to other jig heads uh these are the ones i use but a lot of jig heads will work hook placement is really important and i'm going to show you what i mean right now so this is the gamagatsu horizon head this is that juggle minnow most of the time what you guys want to do is skin the back so you almost don't have it So it's not completely centered. And what happens is, as you can see, the weight is higher, right? So that helps it roll because the weight's all the way up here versus centered and more balanced. So if it's a little higher, it will roll. So this is the other thing I see a lot of Japanese guys doing. Their hook is sort of out a little bit. And I'm not sure exactly what this does, but this is how they rig it and they get their rolling action from it like i said guys you have to mess around please that's the most important thing that's what i didn't do in the beginning so that's why i'm trying to give you guys as many little tips as i can and mention it to you as much as i can that to get the right action out of these baits you've got to mess around a little bit each bait is different so all these baits work don't give up on them figure it out now the other way to rig this is with a nail weight and a 90 degree line eye hook. You're gonna take the hook, you're gonna start a little bit down the nose there. You're gonna worm it through, and that's what you get at the end. You're gonna place your nail weight in the front here, okay? Once again, guys, I'm telling you, I have messed with the nail weight in the belly with great results. Obviously, push it in all the way. In the belly with great results. I've messed with it at the top, just putting it right under the skin. Okay? So I hope you can see that's not centered. All right? So you got the top, you got the middle, and you got the belly. I've caught them with all three ways. Okay? This is a 1 16th ounce nail weight tungsten i have caught them with as small as i think it's like 196 or something i'd have to look at the package i'm i honestly don't remember yeah these are 196 right here 196 132 196 the thing about the 196 is your bait will 
that it will truly hover stroll. That that is the definition of hover strolling. When you put this 196 in one of these baits that's sort of buoyant, I'm telling you, it just sits there and quivers. If you have live scope, you'll see the reaction you're gonna get out of these fish. They've never seen it before. You gotta mess with the weight, guys. You gotta mess with where you put the hook too, sometimes, all right? So as far as rigging, those are your two basic rigging options. But this technique is a baby. There's a lot we're gonna learn, there's a lot we're gonna figure out, there's a lot people are gonna create with it. Be creative. Again, go out, mess around, guys. So the next thing is the rod and reel. My opinion is a medium light action with a fast to extra fast tip. The tip needs to be fast or extra fast because you're shaking this thing all day, all right? Um, as far as the reel, this is a 3000 ballistic MQ with braid. Uh, that's 10 pound braid to eight pound leader. Uh, that's what I'm presently using right now. Um, if you're around, you know, some gnarly stuff, obviously you can upgrade from the braid and the leader. Um, but the, the main setup, you know, the biggest thing I would say about this main setup is your rod and the tip on it, because all you're doing is shaking this thing. You're going to be shaking this thing all day long. Shake, 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 shake. All right. So that tip has got to have some kind of movement to it. It's got to be soft. Uh, or else you're gonna wear yourself out. Trust me. I've already done it All right now. I'm gonna show you some of these baits in the water. Uh, I basically want you to know What you're looking for you're looking for a roll and a flash if you're not getting it Like I said before you have to mess with the placement and the weight sizes with everything the placement of the hook The placement of the weight the size of the weight the size of the hook You've got to mess with all that stuff to get the right action and the line the leader that you're using that's important too because it creates drag so you've got to mess with all that stuff and uh, once you get it you're set please like and subscribe and let me know in the comments which bait you think looks the best